Hey guys, welcome to another Thursday edition of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. And you know, over the last, I don't know, a couple of weeks, month or so, I've noticed uh, more and more of these essential albums uh, lists popping up on my YouTube feed. And I don't necessarily disagree with a lot of them, but I, I feel like there's so many other essential albums that I think kind of get lost in the weeds. So today I'm going to be talking about some of those other essential albums that I think belong in any kind of rock collection. Before I get into that though, there are a couple of albums I picked up over the last couple of days that I thought were kind of cool and I'd kind of show them off. I, um, or at least talk about them. The, um, the, the first two here, they, um, the, the record store I typically go to Dearborn music. It's in Dearborn music, uh, Michigan. They, uh, they, they tend to not have a lot of, they, well, first off, they put all their new used vinyl out on Sunday mornings and they put out a video Saturday night. And, uh, last Saturday I happened to pop on there and noticed that someone must have been selling off their, their rap collection. Cause that's a pretty, pretty good ones. That I don't really typically see used. Uh, the first one was, uh, Late Registration by Kanye West. I'm not a huge Kanye fan. This is actually a pretty good one. It's uh, got Gold Digger on. I'm sure everyone knows that song. But, uh, and of course, all their used stuff I got, you know, you get for pretty good, uh, pretty good price. So I was definitely grab, happy to grab that one. The other one I kind of had to fight somebody over. I guess not really fight somebody over, but um, this is uh, 14, uh, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. By J. Cole. There is a, another guy in line that beat me to all the rap records. And because uh, we were, we stayed in line when the doors first opened. We got to go in and you, you kind of have to hunt for what you're looking for. And he happened to find this and a couple of other, other ones I was looking for. And uh, after talking for the guy, talking to the guy for a couple of minutes, he was like, hey, you seem like a nice guy here. I'll let you have it. So I was uh, definitely happy to snag this one. My son Jack is a, is a big J. Cole fan. This is a fantastic album, though. So I was definitely happy to grab that one. The uh, This other one, I, I didn't actually know that this version of it even was out there. And... So I'm a big uh, Blink-182 fan. And back in, after their self-titled album was released, and I think it was 2003, the band ended up breaking up in 2005, or not breaking up, but went on indefinite hiatus in 2005. And then Mark Hoppus, who's their bass player, and Travis Barker, started the side project, Plus 44. They released a really good album. I think it was 2005 when this came out. But this is the... This is a 2019 reissue of it on vinyl. And uh, this one I had, This was, I ordered this from SRC Vinyl, which if you guys listen to any of my videos before or listen to the podcast Ian and I do, I'm not the huge, a huge fan of SRC Vinyl. But this, um, I was definitely happy to, I had this on pre-order for a while. It took forever to get from it. But this is a pretty sweet one. Um, this is on like a blue marble you can see on the video there a blue marble uh, vinyl this is not the one i just recently picked up i knew this one existed there's actually also a pink one like that out there that i might eventually pick up but i was on uh instagram last week and i just had me scrolling through my feed and came across another version of that and i was like oh man this thing looks sweet and i've got to have it so i ended up finding a uh, actually a pretty decent priced one on uh, Discogs. But it's uh, it's the same album. Same cover, at least. But what's different about this, there's the cover, is this is actually, and it's really cool looking. It's a, I don't know if it really comes through on the video, but it's a uh, clear with a blue and white kind of splatter on there. So it's pretty sweet looking. But uh, it's a, uh, when your heart stops beating is probably one of my favorite uh, albums of that like pop punk genre of the early to mid two thousands. It's just a fantastic album. If you haven't heard it, definitely go out and check it out. But uh, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, man, I gotta have that one. So uh, definitely uh, a cool one to add to the collection. So to give a little context, I guess about some of the albums I picked 
to to pull out of my collection today is you know I, i'm a kid of the 80s and 90s so it's kind of the spectrum that i kind of look through i grew up listening to a lot of you know those hair band and metal bands in the in the 80s through alternative and i really got into punk rock and ska in the in the late 90s and really through the the last 20 years i think i've kind of evolved and kind of listened to a whole lot of different things now and uh you know let's so i tried to pick a wide range of albums from the 70s 80s 90s and 2000s uh so like i said i i didn't want to pick uh, you know because uh, like i said uh, a lot of those videos you see it's you know hotel california the the wall dark side of the moon anything by led zeppelin you know those are the kind of staples that are in a lot of those videos so i was kind of trying to think outside the box and really come up with some other albums that uh that I think equally belong in those those that same kind of category as essential albums. So the first one is an album from, uh, I think it was originally released in 2000. My buddy Corey, he's a huge Social Distortion fan, and it uh, this isn't his favorite album, but uh, it's definitely my favorite Social Distortion album. We actually saw these guys in concert last year. It, uh, it, I don't know if it was... I don't remember the exact venue, but it was just north of Detroit. But it was a uh, fantastic show. We've actually, I've actually seen them in concert twice. But uh, this is an absolute classic album. Of course, it's got uh, Sick Boys on it, Ring of Fire, uh, uh, Ball and Chain. Of course, is a huge hit of uh, so, uh, Social Distortion. So uh, definitely one that uh, belongs in that uh, in that category. At least I think of essential albums. The next one's a really great album. It's one that uh, I think this artist. It might be over underrated in this artist's uh, catalog, and a lot of fans probably, a lot of maybe ca casual fans don't even know this album exists. But this is uh, For You by Prince. It's an album that, uh, now granted, this is not a rock album. Like I said, I listen to a wide, a wide array of, of genres. Pretty much the only thing I don't really listen to is country for the most part. But uh, this is a great kind of late 70s, early 80s kind of soul funk album. And it, uh, if, if it's, if it's one you haven't listened to or didn't really know existed, definitely check out For You by Prince. Um, you know, it just, uh, from, from start to finish, it's just a fantastic album. The next couple albums might not be one that's in everyone's wheelhouse. It, uh, like I said before, I'm, I was definitely a uh, punk rock fan in the, in the 90s. So both of the, the next two albums definitely fall into that category. And I think it's really like staples of that mid 90s punk rock and it uh, the first one is uh it's a michigan band suicide machines this is a uh, destruction by definition great like fast uh good classic punk rock it uh it doesn't have if you're if you think punk rock and you think of you know blink 182 and things like that or or maybe some of that early green day that has kind of the the slower pitch to it sometimes and the harmonies Suicide Machines is not that. Suicide Machines was much more, I, I think, reminiscent of that like late '70s fast punk rock, and it uh, uh, this is definitely their, I think, by far their best album. the uh, The next one is uh, it's No Effects Punk and Drublick. It's another one that I think is if you're a punk rock fan, this is probably one that's definitely in your collection. But uh, I think it, uh, it it's an album that. When you look at uh, some of that mid '90s punk rock, or the punk rock throughout the '90s, really, it uh, I think it's one that kind of gets overlooked. Um, you know, it definitely didn't get the the airplay. I think some of their other albums or some of the No Effects other music did, but uh, Punk and Drublick is a fantastic album. I toss it on actually pretty regularly. But uh, this is another one of those albums where start to finish there's not a bad song on it. So when I was pulling albums on my collection, I was kind of looking at. You know, trying not to have too much of one decade, because obviously I can do a whole, a whole episode on essential albums from the '90s. You know, because my, I was a teenager in the '90s, and kind of most of my musical expression, I think, came through in that decade. And uh, you know, so I tried to find some other stuff, but this, this is one that, regardless of decade, I had to have in here. And this is "Verses" by Pearl Jam. And I think when people look at when people think of Pearl Jam, uh, I'm sure this album does come up sometimes. But a lot of people look at Ten or Vitology or a lot of the other stuff that they've done 
since then. But uh, I think hands down, as much as I love some of their other music, I think hands down versus is their best album. It's a uh, just kind of a cohesive, beautiful masterpiece. Music is a really interesting thing, and it's uh, it's I I know I've said it several times before. I'm pretty sure I've said it on the show. In, is that uh, music is really the soundtrack of your life. And for at least for me, uh, there's a lot of songs and albums that when I listen to it, it instantly kind of takes me back to a time and place. And I know, for instance, whenever I hear Alabama, even though I'm not a big country music fan, Alabama takes me back to a memory I had when I was young, you know, early, early, probably mid, mid 80s. And my parents, we, we used to have, a, uh, we, we used to make popcorn in the fireplace, which I, kids today are probably thinking, what the hell? <laughs> we, why not just make it in the microwave? But it was kind of cool. I remember like it was, uh, all I really remember is my, my dad put on a, an Alabama record in the, in the living room. We had all the lights off. The only light was coming from the fireplace, and we made some uh, popcorn in the fireplace and just kind of sat there and kind of listened to the music and enjoyed the night. So it, it's kind of cool how music kind of brings us back to those places within, you know, just a couple of minutes. And that's kind of maybe that's one of the things that really draws us to music. But uh, the next one, kind of along the same lines, it came out in 2006. 2006 was really kind of big year of my life. My, my daughter was born. It was also the same year that my wife's stepmother, uh, died. So this album really kind of takes me back to that year. And interestingly enough, it's an album that my, so my daughter was born in 2006. It's, it's an album that she has actually fallen in love with really independent of my musical listening. It was one that she, one of her friends kind of pushed her into and she fell in love with. And that is, uh, the black parade. By my, my Chemical Romance. And like I said, it's a fantastic album. I remember listening, driving up and down the, the, so we had a long driveway at the time. And in the winter, I, it, it was a, a gravel driveway. And uh, I was too cheap to pay anyone to plow our driveway. So I would get in my Jeep and I would just drive up and down the driveway for half an hour, kind of pack down all the snow. So, you know, my wife could get in and out of the, out of the driveway. So I remember just tossing this on and just, driving up the up and down the driveway it's uh one of those interesting memories like i said it's uh kind of takes you back but uh it's a fan this is a fantastic album one that i think even though it's a, a newer album i said newer it's you know 2006 i guess isn't that new it is to me but it uh it, i guess in the musical listening realm it is but in the 2000s i think it's one that a lot of people kind of look over and i lo- i hear a lot of people talk about how rock and roll is dead and rock music is dead and it's terrible and anything in the really the 2000s isn't worth listening to but i think this is one of the better albums that has come out in the last 20 years one that's definitely worth listening to if you haven't if you haven't listened to it but uh, the, art- the artwork on this is what really drew me to the vinyl copy of this this is not the this is not the version that's on the cd copy that i had back way back when but the artwork is done by the lead singer of the band i don't know if you can see it really well on there but uh i actually bought the i'm not a big picture disc fan you know there's a lot of sound issues and things like that that people have with picture discs i haven't actually played this to listen to it but uh, i actually bought the picture disc version of that album just because the artwork is just so damn cool so that's the the front of the album and then that's the the back of it so i don't have too many picture discs i think i got maybe you know five or six of them uh you know a couple of them that was the only way i could get that album was on picture disc so i i'll i'll take it i'll take whatever i can get but uh, it's definitely not my my favorite way of listening to music the next one is definitely one i think one of those albums that if you think of that 90s punk rock is probably the one that really sticks in everyone's head and that's uh, An Outcome of the Wolves by Rancid. Probably, I think this is my favorite punk album ever. And it's one that, if you're a music of, of the 90s and uh, 2000s and you, you like that kind of punk rock sound, this is one that you should definitely check out and definitely have in your, in your collection. Like I said, it's another one of those albums that start to finish, there's not a bad song on it. It's one that, uh, once again, I listen to pretty regularly. 
Uh, maybe not. I guess I've got this on CD also, so I listen to a lot in my in my car. Um, but uh, definitely one that is is definitely essential to, to to that collection. The next couple of albums are ones that uh, they're from the '60s and '70s, and I tried to pick. I, I wanted to look for some of those classic rock kind of albums, but not necessarily ones that everyone thinks of. You know, like uh, Led Zeppelin II. Or, you know, something along those lines, uh, um, Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, I, I, I tried to find something that is in that same kind of category, but equally um, equally good enough to be in, in a, an essential kind of category for a record collection. The first one is uh, Welcome to My Nightmare by Alice Cooper. This is Alice Cooper's first solo album after... He left. He separated from the the Alice Cooper band, and uh, in my opinion, I think it's 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 some of his best work, and uh, it's probably my second favorite Alice Cooper album behind Killer, and uh, this is this is a, the reissue that came out a couple of years back. This is from 2018, and I like what he was doing. He, he reissued a lot of his he reissued most of his albums, and they're all on colored vinyl. So this is a just a. Uh, a solid purple just because that really pretty kind of look but uh yeah uh, welcome to my nightmare is a fantastic album the uh the next one is one that uh people probably don't really think of when it comes to this artist catalog and that's benefit by jethro tall ian of course is named after the lead singer of jethro tall he's a huge jethro tall fan um and i'm I mean, I'm kind of there. I, I, I do love a lot of their music. I, I'm a big fan of their early 70s work. I think Benefit is probably, in my opinion, some of their best work of their entire catalog. It's one that uh, I just bought the Steve Wilson remix of this on CD, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. But uh, Benefit is an album that I've loved for, for, for a long time. So the next album is one that I think it's the only one from the 60s that I pulled out. And it, uh, it's one that has some s- personal significance to me. It's an album that I've really loved since I was in high school. And it, uh, the band I was in in high school, we actually got our name from a song off this album. Uh, the album is uh, Morrison Hotel by The Doors. The band I was in was Blue Sunday. And it's, for a long time, it's been one of my favorite uh, Doors songs. But a lot of times, when, when people think of The Doors, I think they instantly th- kind of think of their first album. Or Strange Days, Waiting for the Sun, L.A. Woman, really anything else from their catalog except for Morrison Hotel, which I think is really unfortunate because that's a, I think it's some of their best work that they did. It's a fantastic album, and it's one that I've, uh, like I said, I've loved for a long, long time. And it, uh, if it, 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 it was kind of that period in the in the late '60s where I think that sound was kind of wrapping up, and we were kind of heading towards what was going to be that progressive rock that really dominated in the uh, early to mid seventies. So I think uh, more snow Hotel kind of marked kind of, like I said, the, the ending of that, that sixties, that sixties mu- uh, rock period. I think the next two definitely fall into more of that rock kind of sound that, that uh, we've had over the last 25 years or so. And uh, the first one is green days Nimrod. And this is one where I think green day got a lot of grief for this album. Cause it was such a departure from what they did with, dookie and insomniac and definitely what they were doing with kerplunk you know and the stuff before uh dookie but nimrod was a definitely departure from from that sound that they had had of the over that the period before and it uh where i think with insomniac they're trying to move away from what they did with dookie to kind of separate themselves i think nimrod was a completion of that separation but it's a it's just a fantastic album it's one that i think Nimrod a lot of times gets kind of overlooked with because of the what they did with Dookie and American Idiot a lot of the other stuff they've done but I think Nimrod for me is uh, Green Day's second best album behind American Idiot it's just a it's a really complete album it's one that for sure everyone knows Good Riddance it's probably the one song off here that everyone knows or Hitching a Ride but this album is so much more than those one or two songs. It's a it's a fantastic ride. It's a great album, and it's it's great start to finish. The last album is one that came out in two thousand seven, and it, uh, it it really was released to pretty mixed reviews. 
I don't think it really got the airplay it really deserved. And a lot of critics kind of panned the album. I think a lot of fans did too, because it was such a departure from the band's first album, which I enjoyed their first album. I think this album is far superior to that first album and really anything that this band has released since then. And that is uh, I Empire by Angels and Airwaves. And I, I know you're thinking, you know, it's uh, Angels and Airwaves is an interesting band. They kind of do that like space rock or whatever you want to call it. It, uh, But this is, I think, by far their best work. I guess I should have pulled it out of the really shiny. I have this in a really shiny uh, case. I'll try to hold it where it doesn't reflect in the screen too much. But uh, I Empire is one that I just recently listened to, really for the first time, I'd say within the last year. Uh, and it's one, be- I, I never really listened to it before. Maybe, I think I, maybe I listened to that hype. I listened to too many of those critics and really never gave this album a chance. I listened to their first album and uh, it was good. You know, their first album, was, it's a decent album. The, I think, but this one, I think really head and shoulders was above anything else that Angels and Airwaves did. And I would really put this up there with anything else that, you know, cause, well, the lead singer, Tom, uh, Tom DeLong is from, he was in Blink-182. So I, I would definitely put this up there with a lot of the other stuff that uh, Blink had did in their, in their career. It's just a fantastic, fantastic album. I definitely love it. And I would probably put this up there. I'd put this maybe in the top five albums that have been released in the past 20 years. It's that good of an album. The one thing I love about this, though, is uh, the color of this pressing. This is another one that I, uh, I ordered from uh, my not-so-favorite place, SRC Vinyl. And it and it's just, uh, I had to get it from SRC because it's the only place that had it. And it um, it's a really kind of cool, interesting kind of color to it. And you can see it's an orange, and it's got the, like, darker orange center. But pretty sweet looking, uh, pretty sweet looking album. But it's one that uh, I definitely love that album. It's one of my favorites and uh, one that I listen to pretty regularly. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Uh, like I said, those are, I was trying to think outside the box and try to find some different albums to kind of classify as an essential album. And like I said, if you don't have any of these or you haven't listened to any of these, definitely check those out. But uh, if, if you... If you think I forgot something or you think you need to add something, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me think of, let me know what you think are some of those essential, like outside the box kind of albums. But uh, definitely come back and check out the show this Sunday. We're going to have a new episode out with Ian. We're going to be talking a little bit more about Record Store Day and not necessarily, we're not going to be talking about the titles that we're looking for. We did that in in a previous episode of The Vinyl Den. This week, we're going to be talking about the process of Record Store Day because the, the record store that we're going to go to uh, here at the end of the month is kind of doing a different process. And there's some other stores that are going to have to do different things because of the, the world we live in today with the, with the pandemic and uh, you know social distancing and a lot of other things. So we're going to be talking about some different, some different, like I said, some different processes that some of these record stores are going to go through to try their best to kind of keep everyone safe, but still have that fun record store day kind of experience. But uh like I said, that's all I got. Go ahead and uh, hit the hit the subscribe button down below if you like the channel and uh, give the episode a, a like and share us on social media, and we uh, appreciate all that stuff. But uh, that's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace.